Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Ivy Baptist Church's online Bible study. I am excited that you are continuing to join us in this Bible study series of the book of James, my favorite book in all of the Bible. Today, we're going to be in James chapter two. We do ask that you take a moment to read James chapter two before you continue with this Bible study series. So if you want to pause the video now, read it so you can be familiar with it, then we can continue. Also understand the purpose of this Bible study. It is not to go into great depth. We don't give you the Hebrew and the Greek words and we don't go into semantics. But what we do is give you enough of what's happening in the chapter that perhaps you may want to continue to further your study on your own. We do like to whet your appetite, so to speak, so that you can see it, be excited about it and want to continue in it. That being said, let's go ahead and continue with James chapter two. I'll be reading verses one through 13 from the New King James Version. My brothers, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings and fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes, and say to him, you sit here in a good place, and say to the poor man, you stand there or sit here at my footstool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever shall keep the whole law yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said do not commit adultery also said do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and do so as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Now, what we see in the first seven verses of chapter two is something common that happens to all of us. And quite frankly, in many cases, studies have shown that this is human nature. And that is subconsciously, we tend to show personal favoritism to people based on external appearances. So James says, if you are in a, uh, uh, as a believer and maybe you're in a worship service or you encounter someone who comes before you and they're nicely dressed, maybe a nice suit on or a nice dress. They have nice jewelry on. They look educated. They look the part and you accept them unconditionally and you give them a personal favorite spot of yours based on their external appearance. But then also there comes in another person who may not be as finely dressed. Maybe they have tattered clothes. Maybe their speech isn't as eloquent. Maybe they don't have the same educational background and you treat them a different way. James says very clearly that is a sin. We must be very mindful, especially in the house of God, that we should never measure the success or the blessings of people based on external appearances. You never know what it took for them to get those things, and you never know what it's taking for them to keep those things. Furthermore, we should never measure the blessings of someone based on material things. James tells us very clearly in the text, do you not know that God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith? So we must be very careful how we look at people and make judgments about people based on external appearances. Someone in nice clothes, you can't determine their prayer life. You can't determine their gift, their call, their anointing, or their heart for ministry, simply based on what people have on. And to be quite honest with you, some of the nicely addressed people, some of the most people who are decorated, some of the most educated people are sometimes also the most unspiritual. So we have a tendency sometimes in church to give people who fit into a certain category certain leadership positions and titles based on what they do in the world. And what James is telling us is what people do in the world and what people do in the church 
what is in the world and what is of the spirit is two totally different things. Therefore, we must be very careful when we show partiality against people based on especially their external appearances. But not only that, in verse eight, it says that if you really fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, that is an important verse. The royal law. What is the main law? What is the most important thought that sometimes comes to the Bible? This is one of them right here in James 2, 8. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The other royal law is that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and all your strength. Therefore, family, I have given you already the Bible in miniature. If you don't understand the 66 books of the Bible, if you don't even understand James, you can understand the two most important attributes that the Bible teaches us as believers. Number one, love God with everything you have. Number two, love your neighbor as yourself. He says, but if you do that, you do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Every time we disobey God, technically, we are transgressors of the law. And it says very clearly in these verses that you don't have to break all of them to be a transgressor. If you break one of them, you have broken them all. So some of us may say, well, I've never committed murder. I've never committed adultery. But Jesus said in Matthew's gospel that if you have hatred in your heart for a brother, you have already committed murder in your heart. And if you look at a woman or man lustfully, then you've already committed adultery in your heart. So while we may not have done these things physically, we may have done these things in spirit. And by definition, we have become law breakers. But thank God that it also tells us that mercy triumphs over judgment. It is the mercies of God. It is the loving favor of God. It is the grace of God that allows him to look beyond our transgressing ways and still gives us another opportunity to be in his will simply because he loves us. So that is James chapter two, verses one through 13. Stay with us as we continue with the rest of this chapter, verses 14 to 26 in another video. Thanks.